Yeah, it's such a great, um, I don't know, appetizers are such a fun way to like try different things and have a little bit of several items instead of committing to like one dish. So I'm a big fan. Um, and today I'm going to share two uh, family recipes. One was my father-in-law. Um, he was born in Italy and then lived in Belgium before he moved to New York. So he's got a lot of really cool recipes. I learned a lot of Italian cooking from him and the stuffed mushrooms are like, they were always were like the first things to disappear at any holiday gathering. So super, super tasty recipe. And you can totally make them ahead, keep them in the fridge and then just like rewarm them in the oven if you're like not having them all tonight or if you wanna make them ahead of time for a party. And then the second recipe is no mayo deviled eggs, which is my spin on my grandma's recipe. Um, she used to use Miracle Whip and I did it that way for a long time, but I found using Greek yogurt is a really good way to make them also. So if you haven't been to any of my classes before, welcome, um, very laid back, feel free to jump in and ask questions. Um, if you're cooking along with me, let's preheat the oven to 375 and then um, I'm gonna show two different ways to cook eggs for hard boiled eggs. Um, obviously my grandma didn't have an instant pot back in the <laughs> back in the day. I'm just gonna grab the eggs from my fridge. Um, instant pot is my preferred way to cook eggs. Um, you can soft boil, you can hard boil. Well, I guess it's technically steaming, um, pressure cooking. And the shells tend to peel off a lot easier when you cook them that way. Um, so I'm gonna do some of mine like that. Um, if you aren't familiar with Instant Pots, they're electric pressure cookers and you can, they have different functions. Mine's got like a yogurt maker. I can make yogurt in there. You can sear. So like um, when I do a pot roast, I'll sear right in here in the unit and then I can add the liquid and then pressure cook it. So things cook faster, but you don't have to dirty a bunch of different pans. So um, if you have an Instant Pot in the insert, I'm gonna add a cup of water. Good. Got the cup. And we're gonna let these the eggs cook while we're getting the mushrooms ready. So I'm just gonna pour um, a cup of water in there. And whenever you get an instant pot, it'll come with a trivet. It's this little like rack to help keep things up off of the bottom. So I'm just gonna set that in there and I'll put in. I'm gonna put most of my eggs in here, but I'll cook like four of them on the stove top just so you can see. I'll do it how my grandma used to do it. Um, and I've found with Instant Pots, um, this one, th this one's the Instant Pot Ultra. It's like got a light up display. It's a little bit fancier than the older one that I had. Each Instant Pot is like its own little unique snowflake and you have to see like what it wants to do as far as cooking. So test it out. My old one, it would be about um, five minutes for hard, like hard cooked, cooked all the way through yolk. This one is more like six. So I'm gonna put it in here, seal the lid, and then I put it on pressure cook, just like cycling through to pressure cook. And then I'm gonna set the time for six minutes. And what happens is it'll take a few minutes for the pressure to come up and then it'll beep and then it'll start counting down from those six minutes. So when something says that it takes six minutes to cook in an Instant Pot, it really takes a little longer than that because the pressure needs to build up. And that time varies based on like how much is actually in the Instant Pot and stuff like that. So you need a little bit more time sometimes, but I find, especially for eggs, it's really worth if you have one doing them like that. And then for the saucepan, I'm just gonna put some eggs in here, cover it with water. And then my grandma always did this. I don't know if it actually always works, but she put a little white vinegar in the water um, and said that that helped the shells not stick. So I do that too when I cook them this way. Um, and something that I think is kind of fun to do is, or fun, I don't know, handy. Um, is I'll either hard cook or soft cook eggs and I'll uh, dry them off. I'm just gonna put it on high to bring it up to a rolling boil before we cover. Um, I'll dry them off and then I'll mark them with like a pencil or a Sharpie. If they're soft boiled, I'll write a little S on them. If they're hard boiled, I'll write an H on them so that when they're in the fridge, we don't go thinking it's a raw egg and then grab the wrong thing because 
definitely done that before. <laughs> That's not a fun surprise um, to get the wrong one, but it's really handy to have them there and already cooked, especially you can do a big batch. So, um, and deviled eggs are like my favorite. Um, Marie, are you doing a stove top? Cooking uh, of eggs, did, you... eggs already. My eggs okay. are done. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So for the stuffed mushrooms, I'm going to grab a baking sheet and either drizzle it or spray it with some oil just on the bottom. Just kind of like a thin layer. Set that to the side. And then um, if your mushroom caps, I got these ones I got are pretty clean, but you can always use like a little vegetable brush to clean them. Some people think that uh, using water on them is gonna make them too mushy. I've never run into that problem personally, but I just kind of like give them a once over and see if there's anything that needs to be wiped off. You can also use a kitchen towel, and just kind of wipe off any spots that you see. Um, we're gonna take the, kind of pop the stems out so that you have the little cavity inside to stuff. But um, we're gonna save some of them to put into the filling and the rest of them, if you want, um, if you save your vegetable trimmings in the freezer, you can save them to make stock. Um, I like to sometimes add them to stir fries if the stem's not peeling out, like this one's not popping out too easily, I'm just gonna use a little paring knife, just kind of dig it out a little. Um, oh, there that came out. Um, and then I'll put each of these whole cavity side up on baking sheet. I think one of the things that, I, that surprised me about this recipe is that you don't like mound the stuffing on it. You kind of do it flush with the top of the mushroom and that gives them a little room to expand. Cause I feel like prior to this recipe, I'd never really had great luck with stuffed mushrooms. So I'm just kind of lining them up on the baking sheet as I peel out the uh, stems. Um, also, you could use like the baby Bella cremini mushrooms if you like, but texture wise, we found that the just like white button mushrooms really kind of work the best. But again, any any mushrooms you have are going to be delicious. Just the sometimes if you have like the packs that I'll have a really big mushroom and then some tiny ones. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I forgot to I was going to spotlight this to make it a little easier. Let's see. So I'm going to spotlight. There we go. Um, if you have like varied sizes of mushrooms, sometimes you'll need to leave the bigger mushroom caps on a little bit in the oven a little bit longer so that they cook through. Um, and if anybody has appetizer requests for future appy hours, I would love to hear them. I know we have um, in June, we're gonna make uh, Italian bruschetta, which is another one of my father-in-law's recipes, and falafel spice, falafel spice cucumber bites. So those are some fun ones we have coming up. But I'm always, always open to uh, suggestions, and I love knowing what kind of things you guys like because I also, it'll help me decide like if I haven't ever made it before, it's something that I should look into developing maybe because I know um, there's an endless amount of appetizers. And if anybody has like favorite appetizers, if you wanna tell us what they are, or you can put it in the chat if you want. Anything, anything wrapped in bacon is usually a huge yes. <laughs> success. hundred percent. That's like always the first thing to go at like a Super Bowl party, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so I've got the stems taken out of mine and I'm gonna, just dice up about two tablespoons worth of stems. And I'll probably, I think we have some leftover rice in the fridge. So I might take the rest of the stems and kind of chop them up later this week with whatever is kind of wilting from my crisper and put that in a little stir fry situation. 
it's a good way to use up leftovers. And I don't know if you can hear, but there's some hissing coming from the Instant Pot over here. That's just the pressure building up. And then there's a little valve on top that'll pop up once the pressure is reached. And then it'll be six minutes from then when, um, when the eggs are done. And if anybody has Instant Pot questions, I'm happy to answer those also. Um, because they're a little intimidating before you use one. A lot of people are a little scared of them. I'm a genius, right? What's up? All right. So I'm going to lightly spray the mushrooms that are on the sheet with the oil also. Spray the pan. If you don't have a spray, you can um, drizzle. I like this style because you can put whatever oil you want in there, but whatever you have is fine. Um, one note though on the like pan type of sprays, if you, if you use them on a griddle, some of them contain silicone, um, which whatever your thoughts are on that, it's fine. But if, if it can make your griddle gummy and it can be really hard to clean off. So I try to avoid ones that have silicone in them. Um, okay, so into the a bowl, I'm going to add the chopped up mushroom stems. So about two tablespoons ish. It's okay if it's if it's more than that. Um, and then we're going to add some parsley, about a tablespoon of parsley chopped. I should say a tablespoon of chopped parsley. So on recipes. Um, if they're written well, it should say like a tablespoon of parsley comma chopped would be, you grab a tablespoon of it and then you chop it. But a tablespoon of chopped parsley means that's how much of the actual final chopped parsley you want. So depending how it's written, the measurement could vary kind of greatly because if you grabbed um, a tablespoon of something and then chopped it, it's gonna look like less than a tablespoon. But again, on here, for this recipe, the measurements aren't super stick, they're not like super specific. Um, it's more about the texture of the filling. So that beep was my instant pot coming to pressure. So if I have parsley flakes like this. I'm sorry? Is it okay if I have parsley flakes like this? Yeah, you could use dried parsley. Um, usually for dried herbs, you use about half the amount as you would with fresh herbs. However, I feel like parsley um, doesn't have a ton, like dried parsley doesn't have a ton of flavor. So you might be able to use a little bit um, more than half the amount. Um, usually dried herbs are a little, like the flavor is a little more concentrated, but parsley doesn't seem that way to me. What did you put in the bowl again? You put the chopped up heads and then what else? In the it's just, it's uh, the stems about two, um, about two tablespoons of chopped up stems and then a tablespoon of parsley. And then so two, gonna... two tablespoons of the stems and one tablespoon of the parsley. Mm -hmm. Yep. And Eight. then I'm going to take a green onion and just kind of mince that and we'll keep the white parts are going to go in this mixture and then the green parts up top we're going to use on top later. So I'm going to chop it all thinly slice or mince it all and then like the end sometimes if it's a little thicker I'll just kind of run over it again to make it a little bit smaller add that into the bowl the recipe is also in the email link yeah and um they're formatted so they're printable um so that if you I can't remember if this was a half or a full sheet of paper I think the Deviled eggs were half, half size, but. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave these top bits off to the side. And if I'm going too fast or too slow, please let me know. I don't wanna leave anybody out or get a little too ahead of myself. Um, okay, we're gonna mince one to two cloves of garlic. It's kind of whatever your preference is in the garlic realm. We, we kind of do what me and my husband call it the Italian multiplier. Um, I'm not Italian, but I married into an Italian family. And so when a recipe calls for one clove, we're usually like, eh, or it's probably gonna be two. 
Um, so if you're a garlic fan, I encourage you to put two cloves of garlic into the, into the mix here. If you're not as into it, or if you have like really large garlic cloves, one is plenty. And just mince that up. Did you just use one pack of mushrooms? I used, well, I had um, the ones that I got were the eight ounce size. They were like the smaller cartons. So I got two because I wanted 16 ounces. Mm -hmm. um, if you, did you have a I have two, but I have two, but I only got one done so far. Oh yeah. Um, I, you will have enough filling for two if you want, but um, they do, I, do. I mean, they cook up so fast also that if you only wanted to make half of them tonight, you could save the, the filling in the fridge and do the other half another day. I've definitely done that before. Okay. All right, my water is boiling for my egg. So I'm gonna, it's a rolling boil. So I'm gonna put the lid on, turn off the heat and set a timer, Alexa. Set an egg timer for 10 minutes. So you want like a big rolling boil, like lots of bubbles going and then that's when you, Put the lid on. Ashley, there's a question in the chat. Yep. Um, what's the difference from, I'm sorry, what's the difference from a recipe point of view between minced garlic and the garlic that one presses through a gadget? Um, I think it's just whether or not you have the gadget. The gadget basically minces it. I've never, I know people swear by them. I've just never had one. Um, and the couple times I've used them, they were really annoying to clean. So I, that's why I don't use them. But yeah, uh, if you have a garlic press, it minces it. You could also grate it on a microplane, um, like one of these small ones, you could grate it on there and that'll make it almost like a paste. It'll make it a lot, um, it'll kind of take the bite out of it because it'll be nice and fine. But yeah, I'm, I'm like, I've been tempted. If I get a bigger kitchen, I might try the garlic press thing again. We'll see. Because I know some people swear by them. And, and apparently you can put it in there with the skin on, which is kind of cool. And you don't have to peel it. Um, so, okay, the garlic is in there. I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of plain breadcrumbs. Um, I usually buy plain and then because you can season them if you want if you make a lot of things that are Italian seasoned it's fine to buy Italian seasoned ones but I find it's easier just to have plain and then if I need to add like a little parsley or oregano I can and I'm not picky I just get like the store brand breadcrumbs okay. what else and then we're going to add Great, two tablespoons of Parmesan cheese into the mixture. And we're also gonna put some on top after because I mean, extra Parmesan is always fun in my opinion. I'm using, um, I'm gonna use this just like a little bit of a bigger microplane. Um, any, any size grater you have, if you have a box grater, just um, don't do the big shreds cause you want it to kind of disperse. Okay, the eggs and Instant Pot are done. So I'm gonna, this is where it gets scary for some people. We're gonna naturally release, or sorry, manually release the pressure. On this method, it's just a button on top that you press down and all the steam is gonna come out. So you wanna stand back. But what I do to kind of protect my cabinets, I hang a towel from the counter or from the handle and then just kind of, and the hot steam kind of goes out, it's like, it would be nice if it was safe. You could have like a spa day and just like get a little steam there. Once it's done, there's a little silver button on top that'll push, that'll pop down. And then you know it's safe to open it. And I'm just gonna take the eggs out of there, put them in a bowl with cold water so they don't continue to cook. Um, although, I mean, for deviled eggs, having them a little overcooked is probably better than a little undercooked. Um, just because you're mashing up the filling, it's and you're not really going to see it if it's a little gray inside. But um, Ashley, another question in the chat is: Do you prefer breadcrumbs over panko? So for this recipe, I use regular breadcrumbs. Um, I haven't tried it with panko. I use panko for a lot of things. Um, I haven't tried it with this. I mean, it would add a nice 
crunch. I'm just not sure if you would get, I'm not sure how it would affect the texture if you would need maybe more of them because they're kind of chunky. Um, oh, wow, one of the eggs actually, this is funny. One of the eggs started like taking, oh, I can show you on this, started pulling itself out of the shell already. <laughs> That's hilarious. So I'm just gonna put these in a bowl. You could do ice water if you want. I'll just run some cold water over them. Um, panko is great for cutting stuff like um, like chicken, like if you want like a crunchy chicken strip or um, some, oh, there's some pasta dishes that are great. Like if you toast some panko with like a little um, garlic and oil and maybe some fresh herbs in there, that's a really nice little topping to put on top. Um, can you use a regular onion instead of green? Yeah, you totally can. Um, just mince it up really finely. And if you um, if you don't want it to be really strong onion flavor, you could um, soak it in cold water for like five minutes or something first. That'll like take the bite out of it. Um, like a, a red onion or a shallot would probably be my next preferred to a green onion. Um, you could also leave that out. You could add chives. Um, lots of options. It's just adding, it's just to add like a little bit of onion flavor in there. And I don't know actually if you saw um, Susan's chat. Um, she says she's not cooking, she's watching, learning, and enjoying Ooh. a lovely dry gin martini. That she, is both of the I, appetizers sound great. I fancy. love it. What yeah. kind of what kind of gin are we using? Inquiring minds need to know. <laughs> um I like, I like vodka martinis. I love gin, but vodka martinis, my, my new thing is this potato vodka and like a lot of olives because I enjoy the olives. Um, feel that way if you put in the olives. Yeah, <laughs> it's a vessel for extra olives really. Um, okay, so in the bowl, just for anybody who's cooking along, it's the mushroom stems, parsley, the white part of the green onions, garlic, breadcrumbs, and some Parmesan. I'm gonna add a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt and then I'm gonna grate in a little black pepper. If you're using table salt, um, the really fine grain stuff, use half the amount because kind of like with panko, the grains are bigger, so they take up more room. So if you use a finer grain, grain it'll, um, you'll actually have more salt. Botanist, that is a good one. I love botanist gin. Um, Oh, I'm also lately Empress Gin. It's a purple one. It's really fun. It makes your cocktails look really fancy. Even if it's just like a gin and tonic, it's purple. So it's kind of cool. Um, all right, salt and pepper. So now I just want to make sure that we just, we're going to drizzle in olive oil, stirring as we go until it holds together like wet sand. So about six tablespoons, but we'll see. It's, you know, like, what's the humidity in the air doing today? It's, you never know. So you can mix it with your hands. You can use a spoon. Oops, I have a motion sensor um, <laughs> faucet and every once in a while it kind of throws me off. So I'm gonna just start drizzling it in and stirring. It already smells really good, even though we haven't cooked anything. I mean, well, I guess the eggs are cooking, which boiled eggs don't necessarily smell good, but I love deviled eggs so much. And when my, when my grandma used to make them, she would um, have to make an extra tray because me and my cousins would just like devour them before they got on the table for my aunts and uncles. So I'm seeing the texture here. It kind of holds together. I think I'm gonna put a little bit more in there. There's a question in the chat, Ashley, asking if you can use Pecorino Romano instead Absolutely. of Absolutely. Yeah, totally. I'm just dumping out the water in the bowl for my eggs got a little warm. So I'm just refreshing it with cold water again. All right. So now we're going to stuff the mushrooms. The, the mixture really is not that, um, not that difficult. Um, do you want to cut? Yeah, I'll cut the tomatoes after. So I like if you have um, one of those little 
like a little demi pass spoon, like a little itty bitty guy. I kind of find those are nice to stuff them. So I just fill the cavity and kind of press down a little bit. And you want it to be flush with the top of the mushroom, not heaped over it. Um, Cause it'll give it a little room to grow. My cat thinks there's food for her. No, there's not. Ashley, does this look good? Uh, that looks awesome, Grace. Okay, Very is nice. there a when you there when you squish it together, does it hold a little bit? Yeah, like you're at the beach. Uh, I don't know. So <laughs> all you do, when you go to stuff one in the mushroom, just like press it mm -hmm. in, and if it if it just crumbles too easily, if it doesn't kind of stay put, just yeah. add a little bit more oil. Okay, I'm but it looks yeah. They're not super finicky. Um, but yeah, these are like every Easter, New Year's Eve, they would be great um, on a cheese board because even if they're not hot, like they taste great at room temperature. So you could make them ahead of time and have them hanging out. They would be, I think they would actually be kind of fun, like a salad with a couple stuffed mushrooms on top of it. It'd be fun. Alexa, stop. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna get my other eggs. I'm gonna put cold water on those also. And I'll keep them separate so we know, so you guys can see the difference in how they cook. Huh, one of those eggs kind of exploded out of the shell too. Look at that. Like, oh my, uh, my eggs are very excitable today. Oh, if you, I know this is um, Rye Library. I live up in Ossining, but if any of you are ever up in this area, um, there's a place called Rob's Chicken Store in Yorktown. And you can, they, they sell like chickens if you are, have chickens in your house, like a farm, but they sell, and they sell feed for them, but they sell eggs, farm fresh eggs, super cheap. I think you can get three dozen for like 10 or $12, which like farm eggs, that's crazy good, so. Just a, you know, if you ever find yourself in the vicinity, it's a fun, it's a fun little store. It's just like this random in the middle of a strip mall, like next to a nail place. Um, ask me now in case, will you be presenting more cooking classes? Are they all appetizers? So I put a, um, oh yes, I can put you on my email list. Um, I'll save your email address over here. Uh, I link, this is my events page. I have, um, the ones I'm doing for this series are only appetizers. Um, I have some that I do with the Austining Library, and then I also have ones that I do on my own. Um, so that events page on my website is where I put everything instead of sending people to like 18 different websites. Um, but yeah, I do all sorts of different stuff. I do kids classes, um, doing a stuffed French toast class for kids in a couple weeks, um, doing a cheese board class for adults in a couple weeks. And so I still have a bunch of filling left. Um, again, it all kind of depends on the size of your mushrooms. I'm gonna save this in the fridge. I'll buy more mushrooms or you could like, I think it would be good in tomatoes maybe. I have some like bigger tomatoes, maybe I'll try that. Um, so don't get rid of this, save it. Or even you can toast this and put it on top of pasta. I think that would be great too. Um, I'm all about trying not to waste if you don't uh, have to. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna sprinkle the reserved like green onion, the dark parts on top, just a couple little pieces on each. And then we're gonna cut up a couple, um, if you have like grape or cherry tomatoes, otherwise um, you can use a bigger tomato. We just gotta cut up, take out the seeds so they don't add too much moisture and then press those right down into the top. And I always wondered when he used to make these before I sat down with him to make them, I always wondered like how the tomatoes were always so pretty up on top. It's because he put them in at the end and pressed them down then. So um, set this to the side again. I'm gonna take like, probably like five or six little cherry tomatoes, grape tomatoes would be enough. And I'm just going to slice them in half and kind of squeeze out the seeds. And then I'll mince 
mince them up and or dice them up real small and put a little bit on top of each one. And yeah, I do, um, you were asking about my email list. I send out, it's about like once a week and I send out um, kitchen tips. I send out recipes. I send out um, all sorts of stuff. I try to, to mix it up like, so you're not getting just desserts or just appetizers. Um, so lots of fun stuff there. And I'm always, like I said, I love talking food. So anytime, like if you have questions for a specific recipe or maybe something you've had out at a restaurant and you'd love to know how to make more food like that. Um, like I have one, there's an Italian place by my house that they make um, this really good balsamic vinaigrette. And so I figured out how, pretty much how to make to me what tastes just like it um, so that I can enjoy it whenever. I mean, I still, we still order from the restaurant, but it's just nice to be able to have those things that you like a little easier at home sometimes. Okay, so I've got, got a fair amount of little pieces of tomatoes here. So I'm just going to put a couple on top. Then we're gonna grate a little more Parmesan. Is anybody else working with a small kitchen space? It's very tricky. That's usually like the second question I get. If people ask what I do and I tell them the name of my website and then they say, but is your kitchen really small? Cause it's big flavors from a tiny kitchen. I say, yeah, it, it really is. And it doesn't matter how much space you have, you can make it work. I feel like if we ever move to a bigger place, um, I'll still like use just a tiny portion of the kitchen because I'm so used to like condensing everything. So. All right, so I've got a little bit of tomatoes on top of them all. I'm just gonna. What did you put on the top? You put tomatoes and what else? And the green onion, the dark green parts of the green onions. If you put those in the mix, wow. that's, that's fine. It doesn't, it's not a big deal. I by accidentally put minced onion instead of um, green onions. So that's then fine. I put onions and then I put more onion in. I don't know. If you like onions, I think it'll be fine. Um, all right, so we're gonna do, um, a little bit of Parmesan on top of each. Where's my grater? So just kind of like aim, aim it on top of each of them. Then we'll do a little bit of, a little, one more mist of oil, salt and pepper, and then they'll go in the oven. And this size, they should only take like 15 to 20 minutes. Again, if you have bigger onions, you might need to cook them a little bit longer. Right, get my pepper. I didn't, if it wasn't so noisy outside, it would be fun to do a grilling class, but I live by a lot of traffic and I think it would be a little too loud. All right. So these are gonna head into the oven. Marie, how are you doing over there? And Grace, are you, are you as ready for the oven? You doing all right? Awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna put these into the oven and set a timer. I'll check them after 15 minutes. Alexa, set a mushroom timer for 15 minutes. Okay. I'm just gonna move my Instant Pot out of the way. Ashley, Susan yes. can't believe you use a giant knife to chop tiny tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let me tell you one of my favorite things. That I got this from OXO when my son was little. Um, is it OXO or OXO? Do they, they pronounce the word? I think they do. I think it's OXO, but I'm not sure. <laughs> so it's for cutting grapes so kids don't choke but I use this for taco night all the time. I put a tomato in there and you just, and it cuts it into four little pieces. It's great. I like, I use it a lot. 
um, tomatoes, olives without pits, obviously. Um, yeah. Cool. And Susan has a tiny kitchen. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, I can like, my, I can like pretty much touch both sides of it here. And the only other thing over here is my refrigerator. That's, that's all there. That's all we got. Um, okay. Deviled eggs. Are we ready? Um, I like using a food processor to make, um, to make the puree nice and smooth, but my grandma never did. You can use a bowl and either a fork or a potato masher. Um, so let's see. Here are, these ones were cooked. This one was cooked in the saucepan. So I'm just tapping it and kind of like rolling. And then I always like to rinse it off after I peel. These peels are coming off pretty easily. Um, I like to rinse it off too, just in case there's any little bits of shell and then dry it. And I'll use this, I'll use a smaller knife to cut these um, right through the middle. So that was um, rolling boil and then 10 minutes Turn the heat off 10 minutes covered. That's like a pretty much a perfect hard boiled egg. And then I'm just flipping the yolks into my food processor, or if you're using a bowl, just put them into a bowl. And then if you have a deviled egg tray, I brought, I brought two out. I have a lot cause I'm a weirdo and I love deviled eggs. I grew up in the Midwest. I feel like we ate them a lot there, um, including my favorite. This is my grandma's Tupperware travel thing so I'll put these in here and put the lid on and then keep them in the fridge this is like I know it's probably full of all sorts of BPA and I don't know what and I'm usually pretty careful with that in other ways but it's like it's a special piece so I, I deal with it for that um so this is the fun part where I'm just going to be like cutting eggs so if anybody has any other questions or did you say covered or uncovered Oh, for the eggs. So you put the eggs in the water, bring it up to a rolling boil, put the lid on and then turn the heat off and let them sit for 10 minutes. So you're, once it's boiling nicely, you don't need to um, have the heat on anymore. Um, oh, so this, this was one that was in the Instant Pot. So you can see also cooked really nicely all the way through. If you do soft boiled eggs, either Instant Pot or um, in the Instant Pot or on the stove top, and you want to save them for later, you can cook them. In my, in my Instant Pot, I think I do like three minutes, and then I leave them in the shells, put them in the fridge, and then when I go to use one, I'll, um, I'll peel it really gently. You got to be really gentle with them when they're soft cooked, but then I'll hold it in my hand and just run it under warm water to kind of warm it up a little bit. And they're great in um, ramen. Like you can fancy up a store-bought ramen like that. It's just like having a little runny egg. It's really nice. Um, this one had a mind of its own. We'll see, we'll see. Sometimes I feel like there's like sacrificial eggs when you're making deviled eggs. So this one might be like the tester taster. Oh, that's not so bad. A little, a little uh, goblin looking. Um, yeah, there's also in the chat who would love to learn more about their their grill. <laughs> oh, you know, I wish I. Uh, if you're looking for a book, actually, um, or books, Stephen Reichlin has a lot of really great stuff for grilling, um, and he has a lot of great like accessories that you can buy for grilling. Like I got. Um, some skewers for like grilling things like shish kebabs and stuff for my husband and he makes really good like uh, grill mitts so if you have um if you have a charcoal grill using a chimney it's like this big kind of uh tube that's metal that you put the charcoals on top and you put something underneath it to um, start the fire and then in, instead of it taking forever for this big grill full of charcoals to to heat up it um it centers the the flame so it heats up really fast and then you need to pour it out into your grill but if you don't have a heat proof mitt 
you could really hurt yourself. So um, he makes, he's got a lot of really great um, things and he's, I'm sure he got tons of videos on YouTube. I used to watch him on like PBS way back in the day. Um, oh, thank you, Palermo. All right, so yeah, this is, I could have done pre-cooked eggs for you guys, but you can see in real time. It's, it's not complicated, but it's nice to, I guess, like when I'm doing appetizers, if I have something that takes a little longer in the oven and then something that's a little quicker like that, if you can figure out the timing to make it easier on yourself and then you have two, two dishes at a time instead of one. And the ones that we're doing for June um, are both no cook. I mean, I think, right? Doing, yeah, they're no cook. So you won't have to worry about heating up your kitchen if, oh, I already cut that one. <laughs> All right, well, that one is gonna be our QC egg. Um, but if you're like my kitchen, the air conditioning doesn't reach it so well. So I like to uh, do things that don't involve too much stovetop and oven in the, in the summer. All right, so this tray's full. And then when it comes to garnishes, you can do so many fun things with deviled eggs. Um, I put a couple ideas on the, uh, on the recipe cards, but some of the things I like to do are sliced radishes, like really thinly sliced. I think adds a nice pop of color, especially in the spring, like Eastery type of thing. Pea shoots are really nice. A um, little bit of fresh herbs can be good on there. This was one from the um, saucepan kind of stuck there. Um, I have a recipe for French inspired deviled eggs. So there's, it's got Dijon mustard and um, tarragon and white wine vinegar in it. Um, that's a really nice one. You could do, I did one once where I, I used store-bought bacon jam and I put that underneath and then I piped the filling on top and that was really nice. Um, but I will say one time my grandma thought she was getting paprika. So that's, that's why it's called deviled. It's because the little like red of the paprika on top is, uh, I don't know, must've made somebody think of the devil. I'm not sure, but, um, she accidentally used nutmeg. I don't recommend that, but smoked paprika would be really nice. Like if you wanted a little, um, bit of a different flavor there. Um, I've seen, I've seen people do like Bloody Marys that have everything on the side and like including a skewered deviled egg, which is crazy, but also like it's, it's a snack, a meal and a drink, you know, all in one dish. Um, my kitchen smells awesome. Is everybody just cooking along? Do you smell your mushrooms in the oven? Is it like awesome? Oh, I hope you love them. My son is like excited for second dinner snacks. Um, and then when you're doing your, when you're stuffing the filling into your eggs, you can pipe it, you can scoop it. There's no rules, but there's like different levels of fancy you can get with it, kind of depending on um, what you're going for. If you're just gonna eat them standing up at the counter in the kitchen, you don't need to go crazy, but it can be fun, like if you have a, um, those star tips for a piping bag or bottle, those can be fun. My last egg. Then I'm gonna scoop all this, all these eggs off of my board so it's not like a mess over here. Okay. So all the yolks, go into the food processor or the bowl. And then just a couple other ingredients. Um, I realized that the miracle whip that my grandma used to use has sugar in it. So that's why I add a little bit of sugar when I um, am doing deviled eggs. All right, so I'm gonna set this over on the base of the food processor. Okay. Give me just a moment to scoop this stuff. This, this is one of my other favorite kitchen tools. It's a bench scraper that's got sides. So you can scoop up stuff and it doesn't fall off the edges. 
because um, it's very easy to make a mess <laughs> with the regular bench scraper. All right. So just a couple more ingredients. Limited counter space here. Like I'm good at Tetris though, so I can get everything on. There we go. Okay. Move my stuffed mushroom filling. All right, so to the egg yolks, we're gonna add a quarter cup plus two tablespoons of plain Greek yogurt. That's the same thing as six tablespoons if you don't wanna dirty up a measuring spoon and measuring cups. And this is, I, I make this in the Instant Pot um, with milk and then I strain some of the yogurt so it's thicker to make it like Greek style. Um, and I've been loving doing that. We have parfaits a lot. Um, quarter cup plus two tablespoons. right into the food processor or your bowl. Okay, and then two teaspoons of white vinegar. I, if you're on Instagram, every time after I do a cooking class, I do, it's my, my son's favorite thing. It's, I call it the cooking class aftermath, where I do like a pan of my kitchen so you can see what a giant mess it is. Because normally when I cook, I clean while I cook, but I can't do that when I'm doing a class. So it's always uh, pretty entertaining. Um, I'm going to add, that was two teaspoons of white vinegar, a tablespoon of yellow mustard, if you have Dijon or something, that's fine. I've never tried it with like a grainy mustard, but I suppose you could. And there's a certain amount of, um, of deviled eggs that requires that you taste the filling after you blend it together. Sometimes it's spot on with the measurements. Sometimes you need just a little bit more tanginess or a little bit more sweetness. So depending on how it tastes, you can adjust it after. Um, three quarters of a teaspoon of kosher salt. Again, if you're using um, table salt, you'll wanna use half the amount. All right. Um, this was the other thing that I think might be in Miracle Whip that made the flavor a little different other than the sugar was garlic powder. Once we added the sugar and garlic powder, Mima hasn't like reversed engineered it. Um, once we added those two things together, it really tasted like her deviled eggs. Um, so a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, um, not garlic salt, but garlic powder. And a little bit of fresh cracked pepper. I usually just write an eighth of a teaspoon. It's just a couple turns doesn't need to be precise. And then a teaspoon of sugar, just regular granulated sugar. And then we're gonna blend it, well, process it, I guess you would say, process it until it's nice and smooth. Or if you're doing it in a, a bowl with a potato masher, you can use a fork, just mix and smash everything together. Alexa, stop. Hello. My mushrooms are possibly ready. So before we blend, let's take a look. And I'll show you how they look right now. These look like almost, they're like starting to get a little brown on top. I think I'd like them a little bit more brown. So I'm gonna say like another three minutes and then take a look. Alexa, set a timer for three minutes which will give us just enough time to get the um, filling for our deviled eggs going. So 
So I usually do it a little bit and you can see there's still like some chunks in here. So I'll scrape down the sides a little bit and then process it just a little bit more. All right. So now you taste it and see if it feels like it's, um, there's like a balance of tangy and sweet. I think, I think this one is good as it is. Like I said, if it's not like really like punching out to you, maybe like a little bit more mustard or vinegar if it needs to be a little tangier because deviled eggs kind of have that like tangy like bit of pucker. Um, so you can either use a spoon to stuff your eggs. You could use um, a scoop, like if you have one of these, one of these little like cookie scoops. This one is on the inside of that little lever. There's a number. So this one's a number 60, which says two teaspoons. So you could do that to fill it. You could just take the filling and go like that and you'll get like a perfect little round on top. Or the way I usually do it is I use this little squeezy bottle thing. Um, it's supposed to be for cake decorating. I think I use it for deviled eggs way more. <laughs> if you did the um, cheese board class with me, with uh, Catherine a couple months ago, was that last year? I don't know, time's been flying, but um, I used this to do the goat cheese stuffed pepadoos. Um, I use that for the filling there and it comes with a bunch of different tips. So I'm just using a round one today. You want a tip that's a little bit wider. You don't want like a super skinny one because if you have chunks of egg yolk, they'll be really tricky to, um, to push through. And you'll have to, I think a chopstick is usually pretty good to push them through, but I'm just gonna take the egg half and just squeeze and just make like a little, little swirl. Let's see, a little. Depends how much filling you have. Sometimes like I'll, I'll go a little light and then I'll come and add more um, later. But so there's lots of different ways you can film. You can use just a regular spoon could if you want to kind of do like a faux pastry bag you can use a like a ziploc bag and you can cut off the corner so like this is a snack size one but you would open it alexa stop put your filling in here snip off the end and then you could squeeze that like a piping bag I'm gonna check these mushrooms oh yeah Ooh, they're sizzling. So the cheese up top is nice and golden. So these are good to go. I'm just gonna set them over here to cool a little bit while we um, dress up a couple eggs. I won't, I won't pipe all of them, but I'll just show you like a couple options for garnishing. Um, well, don't forget to devil, that's the paprika. So just like a little light sprinkle of that. If you wanted spicy, you could do like chili powder or cayenne. I have fans on in here, so it's kind of blowing around, but um, one of my favorite additions is these little uh, French pickles. They're called cornichons. I like, I like this brand a lot. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it, M-A-I-L-L-E, but they're like these really cute, dainty little pickles. So I like to take them and slice them in half lengthwise. And then you can just pop a half into your egg. And I think that looks really cute. Um, and then sometimes additionally with that, I'll take a little bit of radish. This one's an interesting shape radish, but you can do little thin slivers or you could do matchsticks, but just kind of giving them like a little bit of height is, is fun. Um, you could put, if you had cooked bacon, you could put like a piece of cooked bacon there would be nice. And then chives are always nice also. Um, you can tear it. You can cut it with a knife. If you have kitchen scissors, you can just snip it right on top. It's going everywhere except onto the egg. There we go. 
So yeah, there's lots of different ways that you could decorate them. Um, classic would be just the paprika on top. That's it. Um, but that's some deviled eggs. Um, like I said, I have a couple of variations on, uh, on this on my website, but there's tons out there. There's some with seafood. You could do like Old Bay instead of paprika and like a little piece of lump crab meat or something. That would be like, that would be really cool. I think. I haven't tried it, but I think it would be good. Um, and let me grab one of these mushrooms without burning myself. Let's see. So that's the stuffed mushroom. I'll cut it in half so you can see kind of what's going on inside of there. They're like, they're nice and soft and cooked through, but there's like just enough filling. It's piping hot, so I'm not gonna take a bite of it right now, but really, really good. And that's it. Does anybody have any other questions for me or how are the people who are cooking along, how's it going? Don't burn your mouth on the mushrooms. <laughs> awesome. I'm gonna unpin myself so Catherine can come back. Spotlight. That was amazing. I can't believe like how you could do the two at the same time. Yeah, I mean, it takes a little coordinating. And if you're not talking to a group of people, it's much easier to like do one, clean up a little, do a little more, and then your kitchen's not like a sure. You know. But yeah, that was... thank you, Joanne. It does. How does it taste, guys? <laughs> yeah, let me know um, if you. I didn't well the links so the recipe cards that you got I linked the um if you open up the recipe card and you click on the source where it says big flavors from a tiny kitchen it'll take you to the post on my website because these two are both on my website um I would love to know if you leave a star review rating that would be that's helpful for other people to find the recipe thank you so much there's a question um I mean, cherry peppers yes yes do you cut the bottom of the stem off the mushroom? Yeah, so I, I have, I popped them all out. You can usually just like pop them out with your thumb. Um, or if you need to use a knife to get in there, you just want the, uh, but save the mushroom stems because you can use them in lots of other ways. Um, and a little bit of them went into the stuffing. Thank you, Jacqueline or Jacqueline. <laughs> and guys, just um, for those of you who, who were asking, Ashley's back with the Rye Free Reading Room on June 10th. We'll be doing another happy, happy hour. Yeah, and that's a Thursday. So that'll be, um, I think that's like a good, that's a good, like it's almost the end of the weekday. Mm -hmm. Have some friends over for like appetizers on the patio. Yeah. And then like power through Friday and then it's the weekend. <laughs> Pour yourself some wine. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Um, I'm on social media at Big Flavors. If you want to reach out to me over there, if you have take a picture. Oh, I was like, oh, wow, somebody has the same plate as me. That's my other camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Joanne. Oh, I see Snacking Marie. How are they? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's Lisa. She came up with the name Happy Hour. Oh, <laughs> Marie. I love it so much. <laughs> Yeah, that's like, yeah. Catherine's like, do you, I don't, I don't want to like step on toes if it's not. I'm like, no, that's amazing. I love a pun. I love a pun. <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. Thank you, Ashley. Thanks. And uh, we look forward to your next class. Yeah, me too. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Ashley, I'll send out that information to, to for you, so you know about the class. Oh, oh, the um, the login stuff. Yeah. Cool. Alrighty. Good awesome. night. I wish I could share these with you. Oh. I know. Now I'm so hungry. I wasn't even hungry before we started. <laughs> All right. Thank you All right, so have much. Have a good rest of your night. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye.